or socialize or why the evolution happens, but more how the things that we do online would impact businesses and um, basically anything with the dollar signing, it's charity giving um, and so on. Um, specifically, many of my research work is on content industry, because I think the content industry is just fascinating. I mean, it's been over a decade now that they've been going through this craziness of, I mean, newspapers 20 years ago was the most sound thing in our lives. Everybody, I don't know, I think I'm older than you. Which is scary. Last year I spoke to the Board of Governors and I was feeling really young. <laughs> this is a big shift. But at least I remember my parents waking up to a newspaper coming to their house. And, and that was a tradition, right? We had, everybody had a newspaper in the morning and suddenly it's gone. We, we have internet, we have that, we, have, we can discuss the fact whether or not we actually have newspapers, but at the end of the day, content in general has become a very unstable um, sector or industry. And there was a phase where we thought advertising would work, and a phase where we realized advertising is not working anymore. And I want to talk about today about one particular um, research that I did, just so you get a sense of what is really, people often ask what is really research in business. Even our MBA graduates often ask, so what do you do when you don't teach us in class? Right, so because it's, I think it's clear what they do in medicine, they try to cure diseases, but what is research in a business school is what's all this. Anyway, so um, just to complete the thought on content, so they move to this new model, the new business model called freemium, which I think everybody knows what it means, which is what it, it means that most of the things should be free. And most means most of the content, most of the functions, most of the customer enjoyment should be free because otherwise you don't have to have a strong enough user base. But on the other hand, if we say most should be free, then you leave very little for the premium, right? And they make their money out of selling premium subscriptions. The only problem is they have left with no armory. What should they be selling for the premium subscription? And so this is the struggle that they have. And so this is, um, um, well, this new challenge came to that, it's called the conversion challenge. So the conversion challenge basically said, suppose I have a wonderful website and I have two, three, four million users, happy, satisfied customers, I still might not be making any money, okay? So this is the big question, because before, I think, generally before the revolution of the internet, if you had customers, you made money, okay? So you should have been efficient and blah, 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 marketing, pricing, lots of stuff. But if you had customers, then you had money. And suddenly we have this situation where the New York Times could have millions of customers but no money, right? And so the conversion challenge basically saying within happy customers, how do I extract some money? And this is a big problem because those are happy customers. So fundamentally the product is good, right? So it's not about improving the product, it's about figuring this, um, what did they actually pay for? And right? how do I get them to start paying once they're already happy customers? Um, so this is kind of where my research came to work. And what we thought, we started thinking, so a lot of, again, a lot of my work, I'm coming to this more from the social context, and so we started thinking, you know, maybe it's not about the product, it's more about the environment and the community and the social aspect. And we created this theory that's called the ladder of participation, and um, you can see what you So this is our concept, basically, in a nutshell. And the idea of a ladder of participation basically says that people um, as they move up the ladder, as they become more and more engaged in the website, they'll be more and more willing to pay. And actually the ideas are based on older ideas from um, organizational behavior. So 30, 40 years ago when we started to try to understand what makes us um, committed to our workplace, they had the theory of commitment and the idea was the following. We start with something called continuous commitment, which is basically a cost-benefit analysis, right? So I'm offered a job. If the pay is good, I'll do the job. That's it. But then, no, I think. Can you see? It's good. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then came effective commitment, which means I actually like my job place. And we spend millions of dollars on HR to make people like their job place so they don't switch as soon as somebody offers them $100 more, right? And then if you are General Motors or Toyota, then maybe you'll get up to normative commitment, which means your employees actually feel obligated. They feel part of a movement, right? And so on. So this is about the job place, and if you take it into the content of content, this is what happens, right? So we all start with, everybody uses TripAdvisor here, for example, right? Mm -hmm. Anyone ever left a comment, rating, something? 
some of us, right? They're really good. They're a really good example in pushing us up. So the thing is, we start with the content consumption, which is very similar to this cost-benefit analysis. There's good content and it's free, so why should I pay? I just take what I can get because it's most of the beneficial to me. But then slowly, they'll pull me in and I'll start doing some stuff. I'll start reading, I'll start tagging, and I'll get more and more involved. And then I'll start liking the website. And so once I like the website, I don't switch even if there's a better offer in another website. And maybe some of us are even committed. Right? And you might be asking yourself, so who are the people who get committed to a content website? So let me just take one minute to tell you about my father. Because my father is a surgeon. And he works, you know, we usually think, oh, those are all like bored people with nothing to do. So my father works like 12 hours a day. And he is busy. But he also travels a lot. So while traveling, he came to this bed and breakfast in New England. They asked him to write a review. So he wrote a review on TripAdvisor. And then two weeks later, I get that email saying, 83 people have read your review. And that made him feel so good. <laughs> and this is a person who saves lives for a living, but 83 people on TripAdvisor made his day. Right? <laughs> and so he started doing more and more reviews, and TripAdvisor are very good at that, because one day he got a badge, and he became an expert. Okay? <laughs> and this is a 60-something-year-old doctor who suddenly feels an expert on internet things. <laughs> Anyway, so then you go up, right? And then you can't discuss going to another website without him coming to the defense of TripAdvisor. This is commitment. And then when you get to the high level of commitment, clearly, if the website sends us a message like Wikipedia did, we really need just a few bucks from you, you say, oh, of course. Right? It's, it's not because I should. It's not because it's a good deal, because it's free anyway. It's because I feel committed to the website and I feel part of this community and communities that we feel part of, we give to, right? And so we just need to induce this in our users and then we'll get the results, okay? And so we actually tested this um, this concept on data that we collected from Last.fm. I don't know if you know Last.fm, but it's a very good website that really merged, um, actually a merger of a website that had good recommendation patterns and, and, and a website that had very good um, community around music, so together, created a very social uh, website for legal streaming music. And I'm actually gonna skip over this, but they do have lots of social features. And what we found is, we tried to look at the people who pay, the day they pay, what have they done so far, what brought them to pay, and we found out that they listen to 20% more music, which I see you're not impressed, and I agree. It's not impressive, by 20% more music, but here's what they do. They do 240% more tagging, they do three times more posts, they do two times more blogging, 240% more group leadership. So clearly, if you look at those numbers, those people who chose to pay, by the way, this is nonsense, right? So this is like 99 cents, I think um, last of them $3 a month. This is not a lot of money for most customers. You don't need to be rich to pay for those websites, right? But the thing is, the people who ended up paying seem to have been much more engaged in the community than engaged in the music. So it wasn't about the music, it was much more of the community to them that led them to be willing to pay. So um, the conclusion of that research was that it's not a conversion challenge, it's actually the engagement challenge. If you get them engaged, they would come. And we were very happy about this, so this was the first paper on the topic, and it actually went very well. Especially in academia, we got some awards, it got published in a very prestigious journal, and so on, so I was very happy about it, but then I took it to talk to managers. And the more I spoke to managers, the more I saw that they don't see this as a promise. And the reason is, is the big but is that people just don't get engaged. And so we have this new 99-1 rule that basically says that 90% of the people would never do, I'm sorry, 90% of the people would never do anything online, 9% would do very little, and it's 1% that is responsible for more than half of what we read. Yeah, so we think about crowds, but you should remember everything you read is being produced by 1% of the population. Right? And if that is true, and if 1% would eventually pay $3 a month, this you can do the math in your mind. Even 2 million users is not enough. Right? It would not be sustainable. And so this is where we started the new phase of trying to figure out, can I get them more engaged? Can I get them, can I boost them up the ladder in some quicker way? Right? And so what we've done is we created our own website so we can test it because honestly nobody was willing to try any of that because companies are really scared of nudging on people, right? So we created this website, we called it Video Book. It looks kind of like YouTube, it's videos from Vimeo. You can rate, you can tag, you can do anything. And if you're in our control group, you could do whatever you want free. 
But if you're in the treatment group, every now and then we nudged you. We kind of said, please tag, please wait, please comment, just a few of those things. And what we've done is, um, what we've done is we looked at four different outcome variables, okay? So what we've done is we looked, first of all, at the end of the story, would you be willing to give a smile? Okay, so this is the most important one, right? And so what we've done is the following. We basically paid in $2 to participate, but then eventually said, you know, this is a better phase and we would love some donations. Could you give us some of the money back, anything between one to 100 cents, right? And so, but, and this, so this is real money, okay? So it's cents and, and, and nickels, but the point is that they were giving us money back. So this is people who work for $2, but were willing to cut back on their own salary and give us back 20 cents, 30 cents of what they've just made. So we could, in real money, test whether or not they're willing to give us more money, whether or not they get more engaged. So we nudged them for the first um, period of time, but then left them alone, see if they pick up on the behavior. We try to see if they like it, because at the end of the day, you should like the website. And most importantly, this is ad-based industry, so we don't want people to leave. So we test if they were willing to continue using the website more. Okay? So we looked at basically the entire valuation of the website, including how much they were willing to pay. And so, let me just skip to that. So we did the following, let me just stay on the donation for a second. What we found is that the people who were niched, the people who we got to get engaged in an active way, were willing to give us up to 130% more. Okay. So this is moving from 10 cents on average to about 25 cents. <coughs> so this is a little bit of money, but a lot in percentage in their willingness to give us some of the money. And then, um, I don't think I have enough time, but I'll just tell you, so we, the second story was, we wanted to know if there's a letter. Actually, this is cool, so I'll just spend a little bit. So the idea is, we, our theory says there's a letter you should clap, right? So what we've done is we gave them the same four actions, but one time we gave them in the right order, starting from small tagging and, and commenting and so on, and the other one, we took the same four actions and we split them all up, so we mixed it up. So you got this, the two groups got the same requests, but in one in the right order and one in an all mixed up order. Okay? And this was really amazing because what we found is that the people in the right order were more likely to visit us again. So our actions seemed to make sense to them. They liked it much more. So they rated us 6.4 out of 7 versus 3.4. They were doing more of these voluntary actions. So the same actions, but they learned it because it was gradual. So they've done a lot more on their own later when we left them alone, and they gave us 20% more. Okay, so they gave us more money just by getting the actions to be encouraged in the right way. So if you put all of this together, basically what it says is that you should be pushing web, um, you should be pushing your users, but you should do it in a very gradual way so we can get them up this level of engagement. And then we started taking it out to the world. So what we've done is we, um, on Wikipedia, so um, what we've done is I came to the class actually, and I told them that next week I teach information technology, so it's easy, so next week we'll talk about crowdsourcing and we'll talk about Wikipedia, here's a small survey. Half of the class, I asked them how much do you use Wikipedia? How helpful you find it, how good it is, does it help you in your job? And then also we would like to make a donation as a class. How much would you be willing to give between one to five dollars? Second half of the class, I, uh, I asked the same questions, how much do you use it? But I also said, you know, we would also work towards adding content to Wikipedia. Please provide up to five topics on which you think you can contribute. So they didn't have to contribute, but they had to think about being part of contributing content to Wikipedia. This 10 minutes exercise, and then how much money would you be willing to give one to five dollars? They were giving a dollar more, okay? So you increase the willing to pay just by getting people to think about potentially maybe one day they'll be contributing some content. Okay, now we want a big experiment with some large company that um, I, haven't signed the NDA, I haven't signed the NDA yet, so I can't tell you much about that. But we do see that it increases um, willingness to pay by 15, 20% on the conversion. Um, I think this is it, so um, thank you very much. Thank you.